If you've ever researched an eGPU, then you've probably seen a lot of reasons about why you do not want one. I read those articles, I watched those videos, but I still bought one, the Razer Core X Chroma. In today's video, we're gonna discuss a few reasons why an eGPU might be for you. Most of the naysayers of an eGPU will say that by the time you buy a laptop, a graphics card, and then an eGPU, you spend enough that isn't worth it. For about the same price, you could either buy a more powerful laptop or a desktop, either of which would have better performance than a laptop and an eGPU combo. And yeah, if we're just talking about raw power, then sure, they're not wrong. However, to me, that's not really the point of an eGPU. Let me explain a few scenarios where I believe an eGPU makes sense. One, you have a Mac. Two, you need a travel laptop. Or three, you need to get some extra life out of equipment that you already have. If you have a MacBook or a Mac OS device, you might not have a graphics card meant for gaming or GPU heavy task. This video is not for that. I don't have a MacBook anymore and I'm not a fan of Apple products in general. If you are, that's cool. Well, Carlito doesn't think you're cool. They just aren't for me. And I'm not gonna be covering any Mac slash eGPU specific setups here. Moving on, let's go back in time. In a pre-COVID world, I was a traveling businessman. I'm not a businessman, I'm a businessman. I traveled at least two weeks a month, sometimes three. This meant airplanes, rental cars, hotel rooms, sometimes public transportation, or awkwardly riding in an Uber trying to avoid conversation. Life could be a dream, life could be a dream. Essentially a lot of time carrying a backpack and luggage. Now of course, I am super strong, quite possibly the strongest man alive. Strong Way stronger than MASH IT. Oh, 1001, oh, 1002. But regardless, if you're a frequent traveler, you wanna try to keep your backpack light. In early 2020, I bought this laptop, the Lenovo Yoga C940. I researched a ton and picked what I thought to be the perfect laptop for a traveling businessman like myself. It has a 10th gen i7, 16 gigabytes of RAM, a one terabyte SSD, and a 14 inch 4K display. And most importantly, it was under three pounds. I already had to carry a work laptop, and at the time I was big into the Nintendo Switch. When you travel and have random stuff in your backpack, charging cords, Cords, cables, a mouse, sometimes clothes. The point is, the weight adds up, so I needed a light backpack. This is a great Ultrabook. It's light, it has a great keyboard, excellent speakers, a gorgeous screen, but it is not a gaming laptop. So while on the road, it was only gonna be used for surfing the internet, watching videos, some basic computer tasks. However, what about when I'm home? My work device was a laptop, so I already had a proper desk setup. I had an external monitor, mouse, and keyboard. This laptop has a Thunderbolt 3 port, so all I really needed was an eGPU, and I could turn my Ultrabook into a capable gaming machine. There are multiple options for an eGPU on the market, but the Razer Core X Chroma is highly recommended. Not only can it add a powerful desktop graphics card to your laptop, but can also act as a docking station letting you live the one cord life. The Razer Core X Chroma has four USB ports, a gigabit ethernet port, and can deliver up to 100 watts of power to your laptop. This Lenovo Yoga C940 only came with a 65 watt charger, so the Razer eGPU is more than sufficient to power this laptop. The way an eGPU works is this box has a power supply and a PCIe slot. Most eGPUs will not come with the graphics card, but some do. This one, the Razer Core X Chroma, did not come with one, but the Razer website does have a list of graphic cards that are supported. For this model, it can provide up to 700 watts of power to the graphics card. Razer has a list of compatible cards on their site, but essentially if it fits and doesn't require more than 700 watts of power, it will work. For this one, I personally use a GTX 1060 and an RTX 3080 Ti. The 3080 Ti is a large and powerful card, but I had no issues with it fitting in the Razer Chroma. All right, well, I guess it sorta of rubs on the edges, but it's not, I don't think I'm damaging my card by putting it in there. All right, so I wasn't entirely correct whenever I said it didn't. It fits perfectly. So you can hear it scraping. So it does scrape the little edges here. That's just decoration. I, think. So I wouldn't call it great for it. I don't think you're damaging your card by any means. Worst case, I think you're gonna scuff up your edge here, but this edge seems perfectly fine. There's no damage at all here. If you plan on going much bigger than this card, I would recommend checking the specs to make sure it's gonna work before you buy anything. The eGPU then connects to your laptop via Thunderbolt 3. The Razer Core X Chroma has a Thunderbolt 3 port on the rear. You will just run a Thunderbolt cable from the eGPU to your laptop. The laptop needs to have a Thunderbolt 3 or higher port. And even though the Razer Core X Chroma has a Thunderbolt 3 port, I have tested with Thunderbolt 4 laptops and it worked just fine. Now you also need a proper cable. 
while Thunderbolt is shaped like USB-C, not every USB-C cable will be compatible with Thunderbolt. If it is longer than 2.6 feet, you will need to get an active Thunderbolt cable. Thunderbolt 3 comes in two varieties, passive and active. I would recommend getting a Thunderbolt 4 cable, which can be passive up to two meters. You will of course need to plug the eGPU into wall power, but all you need to connect to the laptop is the Thunderbolt cable itself. With the Thunderbolt cable from the eGPU to the laptop, it will provide power to the laptop and allow you to use a desktop level graphics card with your thin and light laptop. Once you have your laptop connected to your eGPU and everything is set up, you essentially have two ways you can use it. If you just plug in the Thunderbolt cable and use the laptop's built-in display, you can still see the benefits of the graphics card in the eGPU. You should be able to tell if you're using the internal graphics card or the external graphics card by the performance, of course, but you can always check in the system tray or the task manager to verify the external GPU is in use. Now you will lose some performance in this method. The Thunderbolt ports and the cable act as sort of a bottleneck, and there will be a limit to how much of a benefit the eGPU gives you. In addition, it won't make your actual display any better, obviously. Obviously. For example, this device has a gorgeous 4K display, but it's only 60 hertz. So if you're gaming, you might want a higher refresh rate. And even with the 3080 Ti in the GPU, you're not gonna change your laptop's refresh rate. Ob obviously. The better way to set it up is to use your eGPU like a docking station. You can connect your monitor directly to the display port on the graphics card itself. And since this specific eGPU, the Razer Core X Chroma has four USB ports, you can connect all your peripherals directly to the eGPU itself. So for example, your mouse and keyboard, webcam, USB microphone, any of that stuff you can plug directly into the Razer Core X Chroma. Then when you plug your laptop into the eGPU, all these connections will show up on your laptop. So you get that one cord life, which is really great, especially if you actually use your laptop as a laptop and move it around a lot. It's nice to just plug in one cord and boom, fully functional battle station. The more important part of this setup is that you do not lose as much performance due to the Thunderbolt bottleneck. To be clear, there will still be some performance loss. A 3080 Ti and an eGPU will not give you the same performance as a 3080 Ti in a desktop. So another thing to note here, I don't know if you can see, this is the PCI Express feature test in 3D Mark. This is one reason why you get better performance on either something that's not an eGPU, like a desktop that has a built-in card or a laptop with a built-in graphics card because you get direct access to the PCI PCI Express lanes, whereas with the eGPU, it has to go over Thunderbolt and that will reduce your performance. So I'm gonna run this here. So the eGPU is currently plugged into the external monitor. I ran a test on my Razer Blade 17, so you can see the benchmarks on that as well. All right, yeah, there you go. 2.42 gigabits per second for the bandwidth. So yeah, it's gonna be a drastically less performance than you get from a, you know, a standard system. However, having the monitor plugged directly into the graphics card and potentially turning off the laptop display will give you much improved performance compared to just using laptop screen. So now enough talking about the setup. Let's take a look at some benchmarks so you can actually see how much of a boost you can get from an eGPU. I should also clarify that at least for me, benchmarking is not exact science. I try to set up all the benchmarks the same. I make sure I have all my updates installed. I close out any unnecessary programs and then I run my tests. But these tests can take a long time and it can get super boring. So generally I run the test back to back to back to back to back. And I'm usually doing something else on a different computer while I run these tests. Lately, that's playing Rumbleverse and probably drinking some bourbon. I would also say it is safe to assume it's probably not ideal to run the test back to back. Oh man, oh man. It could cause some inaccurate scores due to heat issues. In addition to all that, I get tired of doing it and I'm drinking bourbon and I'm drinking bourbon and I'm drinking bourbon and I'm drinking bourbon. And I'm drinking bourbon. So I might mess it up a little bit here or there. Now, all that's out of the way, let's take a look at the scores. Let's do this! Keep in mind, these are synthetic benchmarks. So actual performance in the real world can vary. So let's take a look at TimeSpy from 3D Mark. 3D Mark TimeSpy is a DirectX 12 benchmark test for gaming PCs. So TimeSpy includes two graphics tests and a CPU test. Looking at just the Yoga C940 with no eGPU, it gets a TimeSpy score of 986. Compare that to using the Yoga's display, but connected to the eGPU with a Zotac 3080 Ti, the same TimeSpy test gets a score of 8,300. 68. Now, as I was discussing earlier, if you plug an external monitor directly into the graphics card in the GPU, this is where you should get the best performance. With this setup, TimeSpy gets a score of 10,934. So that is over 10,000 points above what the initial score was. For comparison's sake, if you look at a full-size desktop, the Dell XPS A950 with a 12th gen i9 and a 3090, it had a TimeSpy score of 18,409. Obviously, a high-end desktop is going to crush a laptop with an eGPU. If you look 
look at a powerful laptop like my 2022 model Razer Blade 17 with a 12 Gen i9 and a 3080 Ti, it had a Time Spy score of 12,976 using just the Razer's display. Now, I'm going to show you some more benchmarks, but if you go back to my original three reasons why you might want an eGPU, number three was you need to get some extra life out of equipment you already have. So now we're talking, right? I took a three-year-old thin and light non-gaming laptop and got it in the same ballpark as one of the best gaming laptops you can buy today. And that's where some of the value comes in. The Yoga C940 was my laptop, but once COVID hit and I was no longer traveling, I didn't need a thin and light laptop anymore. I was free to get a much more beastly laptop. So I tried a few laptops. Well, I tried a lot of laptops. So I ended up giving the Yoga C940 to my son. This was the first Windows computer that he ever had, but of course he wanted to game on it and it wasn't very well equipped to game on it as is. So that's the actual reason I got the eGPU. Initially I put him on an old GTX 960, but that wasn't that great. However, when I gave him my old GTX 1060, that definitely got him on a level to actually use the Yoko for some gaming. Fuck the police coming straight from the underground. And then I made the very, very, very not smart decision to purchase a 3080 Ti at the height of the GPU shortage during the pandemic. I paid an obscene amount for that card. Oh my God. And even with that inflated price, if you add it to the price of the Razer 4X Chroma eGPU and the Lenovo Yoga C940, it is still cheaper than the Razer Blade 17. Back to the benchmarks. Firestrike is another test from 3D Mark, but this one is a bit more GPU heavy. When just testing the Yoga C940 by itself, it scores a 2,656. With the eGPU, we get a score of 13,459. And with the eGPU connected to an external monitor, we get our Firestrike score all the way up to 20,100. 112. Port Royale gets us from 7,925 with an eGPU and 9,912 on the eGPU with an external monitor. You might have noticed I didn't mention a score for the laptop itself with no eGPU. That's because you can't even run the test without an eGPU. The Lenovo Yoga C940 does not even meet the minimum requirements for Port Royale without an external graphics card. Interestingly enough, the VR Mark will run on the Yoga by itself, but only gets a score of 1444. VR Mark is a benchmarking application for measuring VR performance. With the 3080 Ti in the eGPU, that gets bumped up to 5,991. And with that same eGPU connected to the external monitor, we get all the way up. Nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. To 7,528. PC Mark 10 mimics office type work. They say it measures complete system performance. This is probably one of the few tests that would be relevant for the Yoga itself if we did not have an eGPU attached. So the Yoga by itself scored 3,962 on PC Mark 10. When we add the eGPU, that score jumps up to 4,641. And when we use the eGPU with an external monitor, that gets slightly bumped up to 4,928. So these tests are focused much more on CPU performance. So while the eGPU does help some, most of the heavy lifting on this test is from the Yoga itself and not the external graphics card. Similar story for Sendments. Testing with the, just a laptop gives a multi-core score of 4,526 with a single core score of 1, 1,165. This is an interesting one where we actually scored lower when we paired it with the eGPU, giving a multi-core score of 4,221 and a single score score and a single core score of 1,104. And even when using the eGPU with an external monitor, we got a much lower multi-core score, 3,463 and a single core score of 1,108. Sendbench R23 does not test GPU performance. So all we're looking at is the CPU and cooling. So I would have expected the eGPU to have no impact, but somehow it actually scored lower with the eGPU than without. In Geekbench 5, the story is as expected, but has an interesting twist. As you can see, both the Geekbench 5 and Geekbench Compute scores get better with the eGPU. This one is extremely fascinating because this is a scenario where the Geekbench Compute score beats the Razer Blade 17 and not by a small margin. The Razer Blade 17 with its laptop 3080 Ti scored 142,924 on the Geekbench Compute, while the Yoga with an eGPU scored 194,841. Now, obviously we're comparing a desktop 3080 Ti versus a mobile 3080 Ti, but still pretty impressive. For gaming, we tested four games that have built-in benchmarks. Batman Arkham City, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Red Dead Redemption 2, and Far Cry 6. As I mentioned earlier, benchmarking takes forever. It's cool the first time you do it, and then it gets pretty tedious and boring, but I would essentially try to test each game in 1080 
1080p, 1440p, and 4K. When using a external monitor for this video, I'm just going to call it 4K, but there isn't really. While I'm recording this part where I'm talking, the benchmarks have already been completed. The monitor that I have on this desk setup is just for visuals, but it's a 4K monitor, but that's not what I use when I ran all those benchmarks. All of these tests were ran on my 38 inch Alienware monitor that has a resolution of 3840 by 1600 and 144 hertz refresh rate. The Yoga laptop itself has a 4K display, so the test for the Yoga and the Yoga with an eGPU should still be accurate when testing 4K. However, my test with an external monitor, just be aware it's not quite 4K. Testing on the Yoga itself, Batman has an average of 28 FPS at 1080p, 25 FPS at 1440p, and 14 FPS at 4K. Adding the eGPU in, you can see a massive improvement, averaging 57 FPS at 1080p, 55 FPS at 1440p, and 47 FPS at 4K. Hooking up to the eGPU and an external monitor is where you really see it shine. Using this setup, Batman gets us 85 FPS at 1080p, 83 FPS at 1440p, and 79 FPS at 4K. Now let's look at Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which I will just refer to as Tomb Raider from here on out. Using just the Yoga laptop itself, with the benchmark set to 1080p, we got an average FPS of 16. So basically unplayable, right? Adding the eGPU bumps up the average FPS to 70, and using the eGPU with an external monitor, it gets it up to 57 FPS. And this is an odd one where we get a better score using the laptop's monitor instead of the external display. Regardless, we took a game that was virtually unplayable getting 16 FPS on just the Yoga, and then when we add the eGPU, we got up to a respectable 70 or 57 FPS. I didn't actually play the game, but it should lead to a pretty smooth playing experience at 1080p. I'm bumping Tomb Raider up to 1440p, we get a 13 FPS average on the laptop itself with 70 FPS when adding an eGPU and 55 FPS when using the eGPU with an external monitor. And 4K is much the same story, an abysmal 6 FPS on the laptop itself, getting up to 54 with the eGPU and 53 FPS with the eGPU external monitor combo. So once again, this takes something that was virtually unplayable at even 1080p on the laptop itself and bumps up to a relatively smooth 1440p or 4K playing experience. Next, let's take a look at Red Dead Redemption 2. Using the laptop, we get an average FPS of 10 at 1080p, 7 FPS at 1440p, and fittingly 4 at 4K. When connected to the eGPU with the 3080 Ti inside, we get up to an average of 33 FPS at 1080p, 32 FPS at 1440p, and 29 FPS at 4K. As expected, but unlike Tomb Raider, we get even better scores when running the benchmark from the eGPU connected to an external monitor. That gets us up to 41 FPS at 1080p, 42 FPS at 1440p, and a still playable 40 FPS at 4K. So again, probably not the best experience, but you can tweak settings. These are all ran at either high or pretty max settings on the benchmark, so you can lower the settings down and get a better playable experience. Finally, let's move on to Far Cry 6, where things did get a bit weird. Using the eGPU and the Yoga's built-in display, we get an average FPS of 44 at 1080p, 42 FPS at 1440p, 36 FPS at 4K. Using the eGPU connected to an external monitor, which if you remember is not quite 4K, we get an average FPS of 38. You might have noticed there was no score listed for just the Yoga itself. That's because without the eGPU, the Lenovo Yoga C940 couldn't even launch Far Cry 6. So essentially, this whole video could have just been me saying, without an eGPU, you can't even run Far Cry 6. And with one, you can get up to 44 FPS. That's not the only thing that was weird. When connected to an external monitor, I could not select 1080p or 1440p. I tried multiple times, disconnected and rebooted, but for some reason, when using the eGPU with an external monitor, I can only test Far Cry 6 at the 3840 by 1600 resolution. So I think we've seen enough benchmarks today. I don't want to turn this into a Jared's tech video, but I think it's pretty clear with an eGPU, you can take a three-year-old thin and light ultrabook and turn it into a pretty powerful machine. And as I said, that is enough benchmarks for today, but I did test my 2021 LG Gram 17 as well, also using the Razer Core X Chrome eGPU and the Zotac 38Ti. As you expect, it had even better benchmarks than this old yoga. So to recap my three original points, an eGPU can be very useful. We didn't talk about MacBooks, But for my actual use cases, I gave my son an older laptop that I was no longer using and a GPU that I was no longer using, and he was able to move on from an old PS4 and do some actual PC gaming. And the scenario that I really consider using as my actual daily driver, using a very nice, very portable thin and light laptop, the LG Gram 17, while still having the power of a beefy desktop at home. Personally, I like the idea of using the LG Gram 17 at various areas of my house, then moving to my basement office when I needed the full power of the eGPU. So essentially, depending on your 
scenario, an eGPU could be right for you. I should have made this video last year, then I could have said an eGPU is right for you in 2022, and then make a dumb joke about, uh, you know, lyrics. Anyhow, I hope you liked it. This is the first video that I really wrote a script for. Since then, I've scripted other videos, but I didn't get around to recording this one, but this was the first one that prompted me to actually sit down and write a script. I actually tried to send it to my buddy Tony oh, no. to look it over first. He was just like, that's a lot of words, and then didn't look it over, so thanks a lot, Tony. All my friends are losing. Anyhow, I hope you liked it. I hope to do more videos about like this, uh, longer form, more details, as opposed to just trying to keep up with the rat race of YouTube. YouTube's not my full-time job. I have a regular business job, and then I just do this for things that I enjoy. But this is the kind of stuff I was looking for when I was looking for eGPUs. Does it make sense to have one? How valuable is it? And a lot of the videos I was seeing at the time weren't relevant to my specific needs. So this is the kind of thing I would be looking for. So hopefully you liked it. Anyhow, if you like this, leave a comment. Probably something like Tony Sucks or Five Petrol well, it's better than Mash IT. All those are acceptable comments. And then, you know, subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I might have a variety of stuff coming up. So, anyhow, that's it. Thanks.